We have many who are in complete denial that it happened or that it had anything to do with right-wing politics. They're wrong. We saw it. We recorded it. We need to stand up as a nation and say enough. Whatever your political stripe, there is no room for extremism and violence in the exercise of a constitutional responsibility or right. Welcome back to WGN-TV Political Report. Next week, the U.S. Senate will begin the second impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump. The articles of impeachment accuse Trump of inciting the mob that attacked the Capitol on January 6th. Five people left dead, dozens more injured, including police officers. Despite Republican support in the House, there's no indication that Republican senators will vote to convict the man that their voters still support. So what happens to the party from here? Well, joining me this morning to talk about that, a man who himself left the Republican Party behind after serving in Congress representing Illinois' 8th District, Joe Walsh. Congressman, good to see you again. It's been a long time. Good to see you, Paul. So you represented the 8th District. You beat Melissa Bean back then. That's Raja Krishnamoorthy's district now. But let me ask you, um, you were a conservative among conservatives back then. You were Tea Party. Is being a conservative, or I should say is being a Republican today, is it policy-based anymore? No, it, it has nothing to do with ideas, Paul. I mean, think about it. I, I couldn't get elected to anything as a Republican right now. And I'm still the same proud Tea Party conservative I was before Trump. Hey, Paul, it's Trump's party, period. If you want to get elected to anything in today's Republican Party, you have to wash Donald Trump's feet. It's a sad thing. I left the party because it's a cult. So, look, let, let, let's be upfront with the way you were back when you first ran, and which is you've always been controversial, that's to be sure. Was your rhetoric when you ran for Congress and when you were a congressman, would you say that was a precursor to what eventually then grew into today's world? Yeah, no doubt. And I was very outspoken, Paul. The difference was I felt like I was outspoken back then and controversial about ideas. I mean, this Republican Party today, Paul, they deal in lies and conspiracies. This Marjorie Taylor Greene down in Georgia, my God, she doesn't believe 9-11 even happened. It, but look, Donald Trump was a conspiracist. When I primary Donald Trump, Paul, I apologize profusely for what I did that helped lead to Trump. Some of the angry rhetoric that I, that I engaged in helped bring us Donald Trump. That now is the party. That's no longer fringe. It's mainstream Republicanism. Indeed, you did challenge Trump in August of 2019. Basically, you said somebody's got to try and take Trump out. You did. It didn't work. But I'm just sort of curious because since that time, you've tweeted many times, you've lost everything. You had a national radio show and all that. So what, what are you doing now? How is this shaped up for you? Or is this, are you simply the anti-Trump and that's where your name is now? No, I, I did lose everything because like in the Republican Party, if you want to get elected to anything, you have to worship Donald Trump. If you want to be a big deal in conservative media right now, you have to be you have to worship Donald Trump. I, I, I'm trying to break that, Paul. I'm trying to get both sides to talk with each other. I've got a radio show trying to bring all the sides together. I think the Republican Party is dying. I think it's shrinking. Uh, I think that most Americans are looking for something different. I want to be a part of that. You, Washington Post recently did a story on Adam Kinzinger. You were quoted extensively in it, which is why I reached out to you. You basically said this could be the end of, of uh, Kinzinger's service in Congress. Uh, and actually, Kinzinger has said he, he understands that may happen. So is it really about people have to, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, they stick with the base? and That's what they need to do in their own principles. Sometimes have to get put aside, but Kinzinger won't do that. Now you won't do that. The Republican Party today, Paul, is more Marjorie Taylor Greene's party than Adam Kinzinger's party. Now, how sad is that? Uh, Adam Kinzinger, those 10 brave Republicans who voted to impeach Trump, they knew in their heads and in their heart when they make the, that vote, when they made that vote, they were probably going to lose their job. No doubt about it. Liz Cheney out in Wyoming is going to be running for her life. This is where the Republican Party is right now. It's, it's not a home to Adam Kinzinger. 
But again, I think something new will come along, Paul, to replace it. Well, and the question is, is that new thing called the Patriot Party, with Donald Trump was thinking of starting, and apparently now he's not, but there may be a Patriot Party. So the traditional Republicans, the Mitt Romneys of the world, and then there's you. I mean, how does this line up? You can see several parties coming out as a result of this. Yeah, I don't think Trump needs to start a new party. He owns the Republican Party. That's just Trump trying to stay relevant. Look, the party is his, and everybody who runs for office as a Republican, again, will have to bow and worship to Donald Trump. If Donald Trump wants to run for president again in 2024, Paul, no Republican can stop him. I think what you're going to see then is you're going to see principled moderates like Kinzinger and principled conservatives like me hopefully joining with other centrists for some kind of common sense principal party in the middle and let the Republican Party be an intolerant Trumpy party. Uh, Joe, just about 10 seconds for this answer. Trump certainly has lost his social media megaphone. Does his influence diminish in time because he doesn't have his Twitter or any other of those social feeds? God, no. I think he'll be stronger in two years than he is now. The party is his, Paul, period. Former Congressman Joe Walsh of the 8th District, I don't think we've seen the last of you. Please come back here. I appreciate it, Joe. Appreciate your time. Good to see you, Paul. All right.